Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you so much for your love and your strength. Thank you for your comfort and encouragement. Thank you for your presence and your peace. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being more powerful than, than anything. Thank you for always being with us. Lord, continue to give each one courage and strength and hope during all this. I pray, Lord, that you will minister to each family, that you will love on them, and that you will remind them how precious that they are to you. Thank you again for always being with us. And again, continue to be with each one in a mighty way. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's so good to be with you again tonight. Thank you for uh, um, joining us with this service tonight. Um, when I was growing up back in Cedartown, Georgia, we used to have a... Uh, children's event um, every year to start the school year and it, it involved uh, food of course but it also involved a, a campfire and one of the songs that I learned around that campfire was Peace Like a River and uh, we certainly are dealing with this uh, situation that we're in in a different way than the rest of the world does because we have faith, hope and love in our God and uh, we do have peace like a river. So I want to invite you to uh, join us as we sing Peace Like a River. I've got peace like a river. got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. In my soul, one more time, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. so much for singing. Our next song that we're going to sing together is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And the chorus says, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And that's what we've been doing today, praising the Lord all day long. And I, uh, we have uh, a strong assurance in our Lord Jesus Christ during these times. So let's sing together, Blessed Assurance. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Sing it. Uh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Savior all the day long. Thank you, and the Lord bless you. All right, children, gather around, gather around, children. Everybody's ready? You ready, children? All right, so, children. What is this right here? Toilet paper, right. This is toilet paper. So, I hear these days that the toilet paper is hot commodity. Right? And so sometimes when you go into the store these days, they might not have toilet paper. They might have ran out of toilet paper. And so we have some toilet paper still at the church, which is a good thing. But sometimes when you go in stores like... Uh, uh, some stores they might not have toilet paper so it kind of kind of ran out all right so uh, what about this right here can you see this right here what is this right what is this yell yell right chocolate milk chocolate milk the best thing ever created so I was in the store the other day trying to get some chocolate milk but when I went to the cooler to where the chocolate milk is to open it up and get the uh, two things of chocolate milk, they were out, out of chocolate milk. So guess what I did when there was no chocolate milk? I kind of pushed the panic button. Oh no, what am I going to do? They're out of chocolate milk. There's no more chocolate milk in the store. Will I ever be able to drink chocolate milk again? They were out, so I panicked. So sometimes you might run out of toilet paper. Sometimes you might run a chocolate milk. But I have some good news for you, okay? And that good news is found in Psalms chapter 118. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let Israel say, His faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His faithful love endures forever. And in the very last verse of Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. So we read in Psalm 118 that God's love will always endure. God's love is always faithful. God's love will never run out. We may run out of toilet paper. We may run out of chocolate milk. But eventually, but we will never, ever run out of God's love. It's, it's always available. So know that, that no matter what goes on in this world today, God's love never fails. God's love is always there for you. God's love is always constant. You will never run out of God's love. He's always with you. He always loves you. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for your love. Lord, even though we might mess up, you still love us. Lord, your love is always available. It's always ready. It's always there. So, Lord, thank you for loving us like you do. Lord, continue.
continue to let each one know that you are with them, that you will guide them, and that you love them at all times. Thank you so much. We love you. Help our love for you be constant as well. Help it never end. Help us love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Help us love our neighbor as ourselves because your love for us never ends. Thank you, Brother Cliff and Brother Doug and Mr. Irwin. And I do want to say a word about Mr. James McAllister, who has helped us to be able to produce these worship services online. If you uh, have your Bibles with you, if you don't mind pulling those out, on Sunday nights we have been in a series from the 23rd Psalm. Now, when, uh, when I was doing preparation and getting ready to, to preach for the month of March, at that time, I really had no idea. I'd heard of the virus, uh, but I had no idea that we would actually be canceling services as a result. But what a, what a neat thing that our God has done. As, as we've been in the 23rd Psalm, what an appropriate passage for the time that we're now living. And so if you have your Bible, Psalm 23, tonight we're thinking about the idea of refuge. God is our refuge. The Bible says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is a, probably the, the most well-known psalm, uh, Psalm 23. And tonight we're thinking about our refuge. Now these are the words... The words that I just read to you are the words of a shepherd and they're written about the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you look at this psalm and how it's placed in the psalms, it's kind of an interesting placement. If you were to go back to Psalm 22, you will read about um, a suffering Savior. And, and of course, this time of year, we tend to think about the cross and the resurrection as we prepare for Easter Sunday morning. And so when you read Psalm 22, you see the picture of a suffering Savior. And then in Psalm 23, you see the picture of a good shepherd. And then in Psalm 24, you see the picture of God as a supreme sovereign. He is a Savior on a cross, yes. He is a shepherd who cares uh, for his sheep. Yes, and he is a sovereign who sits on his throne. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know this is an unusual time in history, but I want you to know that our God has not moved. He is still the sovereign God who sits on his throne. David explains that it's terribly important that we understand who our shepherd is. And so he's going to give us an ocular demonstration of, an illustration of what our chief shepherd does to meet the needs of his dense and defenseless sheep. Remember, we've talked about the sheep-shepherd relationship. And so the good shepherd gives his sheep refuge in, in times of trouble. And my goodness, don't we need that right now? Now, there are a couple things from the passage of Scripture we're really narrowed in on verse 4. I want to read that verse to you again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. First thing I want to talk to you about tonight is the shadow of death. Now, I don't know much about sheep, and so what I share with you are things that I've read or listened to. When sheep get lost, sometimes in that terrain, they get trapped in between mountains, 
and at the right time of day, the sun will cast a shadow and the sheep will panic because they will think night is coming. And the sheep are defenseless at night. And David says that the shadows of life, sometimes they come over us. And he says, when that happens, don't be afraid. Going into the valley of the shadow of death will document, it will authenticate, it will validate who we are and what we really depend on. That's what I kind of think what's happening in our world right now. We are being forced to depend on our God, and thank goodness our God is awesome. He is great. He is dependable. The valley is a place where we find out who God is. The Christian life, ladies and gentlemen, is not a rose garden. It's not like walking through a rose garden. We are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I want you to know that in life, you're going to have some problems. But the good news is you have a good shepherd, and he, <clears throat> he can write you a prescription that will guarantee you his presence and power to overcome every problem that you will encounter. This verse is a picture. When you, when you read this verse, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is the picture of sheep being led by the shepherd. They're walking down a steep hill, and they're fearful because of the possibility of death. Death-like shadows, and I want to say this strongly, death-like shadows cannot hurt us. A shadow is like a knife that won't cut. It's like a bee that won't sting. It's like a dog that won't bite. Walking through life is like walking through the shadow of death. So, number one, I want you to think about the shadow of death. But I also want you to think, number two, about his comfort. Now, the psalmist says, as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a reassuring thought right now. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. David is saying that when you are going through something, and that makes you think that you might die, he says, don't, don't worry and don't fear. Have you ever been in a situation like that before? where you realize maybe you're having a major surgery and you're thinking, you know, I may get through this, I may not. David says, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Now, the reason he can say that, and I want you to, I want you to get a hold of this right now, is because the shepherd has whipped the shadow. That's right. The shepherd has whipped the shadow. What? The valley will do for you is show you who you can depend on. Now, most of us, in our, our fleshly nature, we try to work out our situations, our problems, how we're going to respond to this virus. We try to work all that out mentally. But you know, the truth of the matter is, folks, there's nothing we can do. We've got to look to God. We've got to look to Him. He's the only one who can help us. God has a way of showing us that life does not consist of the abundance of things that we have. Now, I want you to know you could have a large bank account right now. You could have a large bank account but not be able to purchase healing. You can have a nice bed. Did you know that mattresses are always on sale? You ever notice that? They're always on sale. You can have a, a, a brand-new mattress... But that don't, doesn't guarantee that you're going to always sleep at night. You can have a house alarm, insurance in place, but you can't purchase security. The good news is that God in all of his greatness shows up in the valley. Amen? God in all of his greatness shows up in the valley. He validates who he is and what he can do by allowing us to, to deplete what it is that we are in the flesh to show us that he is more than enough. Amen. Our God is more than enough. 
It's not about us. It's really about him. He leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, so we don't need to fear any evil. Do you know why we don't need to fear any evil? Because he is with us. You know, I can't tell you. I wish I could tell you what the next month is going to hold, the next two months, next six months. I, I can't. But I can promise you this, that you don't need to be afraid. Why? Because he is with you. The shadow of death, his comfort. There's a third thing that I want you to see from this passage, and that is his rod and his staff. Now the question comes up, what if we slip? Well, here's the good news. Listen to what David said. He said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our shepherd has a rod and a staff, and he uses those instruments to comfort us. The rod was a club that the shepherd used to beat away enemies that tried to prey on the sheep. And the staff was a longer stick, and it had a hook on it. And so the shepherd could take the staff. If a sheep was, was caught in the bushes or a thicket, and he could reach that staff into that thicket and use that hook to pull the sheep out to safety. Aren't you glad that we have someone watching over us in the valley? And so as you go through the valley, I want to challenge you not to pitch a tent there. You are only in the, the university of adversity for kingdom advancement. Now David, in his life, he became entangled in the thickets of life because of his immorality with Bathsheba and murder. The shadow of death was all over him. But he dealt with his sin, he confessed his sin, he returned to God, and God's rod protected him, and God's staff pulled David back in, and God's grace covered him. So I want you to know that if God is your Savior, if Jesus is your Savior, then the Lord is your shepherd, and he is always watching over you. He is acquainted with your past. He can deliver you in your present, and he will oversee your future. And I don't know about you, but it is mighty nice to be under the pastoral care of Jehovah God. And so when the Lord is your shepherd, he will soothe all of your fears. If you're lonely, he will be your company keeper. That's what a shepherd does for his sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, we have security in our shepherd. Now, I don't know what decisions uh, you may make in, in your life, but I, I do want to offer to you, we can't give a formal invitation like we normally would, but if God's spoken to your heart and you need to talk to someone, I want to encourage you to call a member of the staff, one of our deacons. If you need uh, assistance, please let us know. And thank goodness that we serve a great God who is also a good shepherd. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you care about every situation that we face in life. God, there's not a heartache, there's not a disease, there's not a virus, there's not a problem that we encounter that you don't care about. And so, Father, I thank you for being our shepherd. I thank you for being with us through the valley of the shadow of death. God, help us to remember that we are not alone. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.